Welcome to AADT 4120, Serious Gaming and Simulations, Week 10, Instructional Design, Video Clip 2 of 3. I'm Professor Bill Kapralos, and over the next few minutes, we will be discussing instructional design models. However, prior to doing so, here's the list of analysis questions for this particular video clip. Number one, what is Bloom's taxonomy? Number two, what is the ADDI model and what is one of its drawbacks? Number three, what is common amongst all instructional design models? Number four, what is agile instructional design? Let's begin our discussion by examining Bloom's taxonomy. Bloom's taxonomy is more of a classificational model than it is a design model. It concentrates on the instruction from a learner's perspective in contrast to the instruction itself, which is commonly done in many of the other instructional design models. Bloom's taxonomy refers to the different learning objectives that educators set for students, and it divides educational objectives into three domains. One, cognitive, two, effective, and three, psychomotor. It also categorizes learning into six main areas that follow an approximate progression of complexity and higher thinking involvement from simple memorization to critical evaluation. The six main areas are 1. Knowledge, 2. Retention, 3. Application, 4. Analysis, 5. Synthesis, and 6. Evaluation. A complete discussion of Bloom's taxonomy will not be provided here, but there are many detailed outlines available online including a thorough overview via Wikipedia. Focusing on systematic instructional design, we will examine some specific instructional design models. Such prescriptive approaches to instructional design are particularly popular when you consider corporate training and human resource development, often because of the learning needs within such applications tend to be very specific. Furthermore, it is also the case that it is easier to track development using a highly structured model and this can lead to a greater accountability, both with respect to the development and evaluation of effectiveness. Given these considerations, considerable effort has gone into creating models that can be used to create instruction that are both structured and systematic. Most of these fall under the general heading of instructional systems design. Let's look at a specific model, and in particular, the ADDI model. Taking a systematic approach to instructional design was strongly influenced by the development of the systematic approaches to software design back in the 1970s. And it really gained popularity with development of the U.S. Army's inter-service procedures for instructional systems development. It should be mentioned that the approach advocated and used by the U.S. Army Training Board is a comprehensive one. And it has always advocated the open quote, application of modern technology to the fullest degree possible, end quote. However, according to Katrin Becker and Jim Parker, this integration of modern technology often seems to have been lost in translation for many modern instructional design models. And the parts of the procedures that have been widely adapted are from the high-level overview instead. This high-level model ultimately came to be known as ADDI. ADDI stands for Analysis, Design, Development, Implementation, and Evaluation. And although it is oversimplified, it still is popular in professional training today. Analysis refers to the process of defining desired outcomes. Design refers to the process of determining how desired outcomes are to be accomplished based on supporting systems needed, required resources, timetable, and budget. Development refers to the establishing of a requisite system or systems in acquiring needed resources to obtain desired outcomes. Implementation refers to the process of implementing design and development plans within the real-world environment. Evaluation refers to the process of measuring the effectiveness and efficiency of the implemented system and using the collected data as an opportunity for improvement in closing the gaps between the actual and the desired outcomes. Despite the popularity of the ADDI model, 
there are problems associated with it when we take a strict application of it. More specifically, it implies a linear progression that doesn't encourage adequate and ongoing reflection of the design as it is being developed, given that the evaluation is strictly at the end of the process. In other words, there are no changes to be made after the model has already been designed. A variant was developed to address this problem and indicates the importance of ongoing evaluation much more clearly. However, this revised model still remains far too generic for direct application. Here is a graphical illustration of the revised ADDIE model. And as can be seen, evaluation and testing are now a part of each of the other phases. The Dick and Carey Systems Approach model is a popular model that can be an effective aid in the design of instruction, particularly when you consider design teams that include novice designers or design teams that include a diverse collection of team members. And this is often the case when you consider projects that include digital media. Similar to most systematic models, the Dick and Carey model is essentially linear, and it follows a similar set of basic steps as in the ADDIE model that we previously examined. An important addition is that this model includes revision throughout the entire process. A graphical representation of the Dick and Carey model is available from the following link. Another model is the Morrison, Ross, and Kemp model. It's a model that attempts to shift the focus from a linear development process to one that is more systematic. A graphical representation of the Morrison, Ross, and Kemp model is available from the provided link. Part of the idea of this model is that the planning in the revision phases should permeate throughout the design process, and this is certainly an important shift. However, if you look at the diagram that outlines this particular model, even without explicit arrows pointing from one face to the next, the placement of the faces in a clockwise progression still implies a certain linearity in the design that places the actual design of the medium near the end. It fails to highlight the potential impact that a particular medium may have. Part of the challenge of designing learning using modern media is that the media must really be an integral part of the design process right from the start if it is to be used effectively. Therefore, some specific demands of the medium must be an explicit part of the process in any design model that is employed. When we consider the models that we just examined and many other instructional design models as a group, we begin to notice that most include many of the same fairly specific elements. Although the differences may appear to be major when considering the visual representations of the models, the differences are actually not that big. They basically include the five basic elements of the ADDIE model. In most cases, the primary differences have to do with the way the subparts are categorized and the placements of bubbles and connectors within the visual representation. When such models are put into practice, the application is rarely as clean as one hopes, and each phase remains subject to influence from the other phases. Also, when you have experienced designers and developers on the team, they rarely follow a straightforward linear progression in the approach. We end our discussion on instructional design models by examining agile instructional design. The basic premise behind agile instructional design is that it is an emergent, adaptive, and iterative model, and the focus is on the creation of a prototype early on in the design phase. In other words, you want to create a functional, even if incomplete, version of the solution as soon as possible. The prototype is the focus of this particular design process. Agile instructional design gets its start in the early 1990s, and it was developed as a response to the inefficiencies of the then standard approaches that we previously described. The model itself is a variation of the standard waterfall model, where each step follows sequentially from the last, and it's assumed that the last three steps of the model form an iterative loop going from construction to use and testing, installation and maintenance repeatedly as the product matures. In other words, you create your prototype early on and you continue refining your prototype, continually developing, testing, and using it. Agile development is not specific to instructional design. Agile design is a commonly used technique when considering game design and software development. Some form of playable prototype is expected early on in the design and development phase, 
and the development typically proceeds with the help gained from feedback from testing of this working prototype model, which continues to evolve as the development progresses. It is also a model that makes most sense when developing simulations in games. The inclusion of a part that acknowledges the need to install and maintain the system comes from the fact that the approach came out of software design. And since games and simulations are a form of software, it should come as no surprise that it is a good fit. A graphical representation of this model is available online via the link provided. This brings us to the end of our discussion on instructional design models, and I just want to point out the reference by Katrin Becker and Jim Parker, which the majority of this material was based on. This brings us to the list of analysis questions for this particular video clip. Number one, describe an ADI approach to developing a serious game. Number two, Bloom's taxonomy concentrates on the instruction from the learner's perspective rather than the instruction itself. Why is it important to focus on the learner? Number three, describe an agile approach to developing a serious game. Number four, the agile approach emphasizes the prototype. When developing a serious game or a virtual simulation, can we have a non-electronic version prototype? Explain. This is the end of this video clip. Thank you.